Elm Countdown 2021. So I went through, these are only new albums this year. There are not reissues, none of that. New stuff I bought. Went through everything, listened to everything all over again. Luckily, I've been able to work at home this week. They didn't have us out traveling, so I could do this. And it just kept changing, kept changing, got some new stuff. It's like, yeah, where does that fit in? But we're going to do this. So I'm going to start with some honorable mentions. They didn't make the top 10, but they were close. And I really, really, really like them a lot. And the first off here is... Rats Alley, and this is by Michael P. Dawson. He does have a channel. Please check that out, Michael P. Dawson. Uh, he's put out a number of different albums and CDs. This is the one he put out this year, and dare I call it whimsical. Uh, Michael, he plays every, every, every instrument on here, and I mean, it's fun, it's playful, um, there's, there's definite leanings toward Prague with it. Uh, the flute is really cool. Uh, just a, it's a really neat album. It's instrumental. So I, I don't know, Michael, do you sing? I'm not sure if he sings, but it is, um, just, just a great album. And I really, for me, I think it's the best album that Michael's put out. So it's called Rats Alley, Michael P. Dawson. Another one that just didn't quite get, it was almost in the top 10. Dean Wareham from Luna. He put this out and was on some red vinyl. If you like Galaxy 500, if you like Luna, well, that's Dean Wareham's groups. Britta Phillips also sings on here. So it is that dream pop type sound to the music. Uh, I, I, I really enjoy his voice. He doesn't have like this huge vocal range, but it just, how he does it, it sounds good. His guitar, it's understated. It's played, it's there, but you know, it isn't like these, well, you know, he does do crazy guitar solos. I've, I've heard him, but this doesn't have them. This is just an album that's very beautiful. Very well done. Really enjoyed it from Dean Wareham. Uh, and what was the name of that album even? I Have Nothing to Say to the Mayor of L.A. That's a great title, huh? Another one. I, actually, I bought this one just recently. Uh, Dale at Gatefold 33, I believe, showed it. And they're out of England. And I haven't even shown this on the morning show, but I will talk more about this group. It's the Fabulous Corettes. Flavia and Martin Corey. Think the Ronettes with Garage Rock. And that's what you're going to get. Does that not look like a Ronette? I think it does. And very much Garage Rock happening. Uh, this is back in mono. That kind of explains it all. Fun, quirky album. Didn't quite make the top ten. The other one that just missed out was The Chills. Chills put out a new album. Haven't shown this one in the morning show either. Again, I got a couple of these new ones. Uh, wonderful album. Really, if you like the music of the chills, this keeps it going. Um, just be beautiful sounding. Every song's different, so it's it's not like the same old, same old. They really change it up, the instrumentation, and they keep it absolutely interesting. Uh, this is just a really good listen. And it is on cool vinyl. But I will talk more about this later. But it just missed the top 10. Okay, so let's go. I think it's top 11, actually. Yeah, I can't count, really. But let's begin. The first one I have is Belmoria. I had gorgeous album. Think... This is very much neoclassical. Uh, this is Michael Moeller's band. He has a um, channel. He doesn't really make videos, but he's busy. He's touring and hopefully touring this album. I've, I've had almost all their, their, um, their music. 
and this one I absolutely find beautiful. It's dreamy. The, the, the beautiful tinkling of the piano, the quiet guitars playing. They add in some horns. I mean, there, there's a song on here, uh, La Vagabond. Man, it's just, there's this French horn playing with the piano and the guitar in the background. Gorgeous. Just this, this is such a peaceful album. You know, there's times in life where we need something. Even if you are a heavy metal guy, there's times in life you just need to have something that's peaceful and quiet. And that this is the one that did it. Uh, the Wind. Belmoria, The Wind. Absolutely loved it. This is a newer edition. I haven't shown this on my morning show either to talk about yet. Courtney Barnett. I bought it because everyone's been talking about it, showing it, putting it in their top 10. I hadn't. I used to have a couple Courtney Barnett CDs, but hadn't really thought about her. So I bought this. And it was beautiful. I really, really liked it. You know, again, the, there's, there's, there's some more aggressive songs on here, some fast paced, but for the most part, I find it kind of more, more, more relaxing. Really nice storytelling, great guitar playing, uh, it just a, a truly enjoyable listen that I think every time you put it on, you're going to get something more from. And, you know, it's one I kind of just ignored all, all year long, and finally I kept saying, everyone's liking it, everyone's liking this, so there must be a reason why. And thought, well, let's just give it a try, and so I did, and really, really enjoyed uh, the album, and it's called, I should say the names of these albums, right? Things Take Time. Take Time. Things Take Time. Take Time. Kind of an odd. Kind of odd, huh? Then, um, the Vinyl Douche got me to, into buying this one here, Sam. I bought a few albums from him that I really enjoyed. And this is The Umbrellas. Think Dream Pop. That's really what it is. Uh, beautiful soundscapes being made. The vocalist is... His voice is so-so. I, I, it's not the most melodic, but it fits the music. And, you know, it's just, you know, there, there's some nice harmonies going on. It, it just, it's a very much a dream pop type of an album. And it is their self-titled. It's their first album, just called The Umbrellas. And just some really wonderful music. Truly enjoyed it. I don't even know where my count's at. I didn't even bother. Then we go to Robert Plant and Elson Cross. This was one of my most highly anticipated albums. One that I was super excited about coming out. Ever since they had that debut, I have apps which I absolutely loved. Just black vinyl, big deal. Uh, you know when they when they did that album together was it back two thousand seven, two thousand three. I don't remember. This is quieter. This doesn't have as many fast paced songs as the previous one, but their voices are better. I think Robert Plant's voice is outstanding, and he harmonizes more. You know, when they first did it, you know, Krauss took a lot of the harmonies because Plant will, will freely admit, I don't really do harmonies. He, It's true, he's a lead singer. In Led Zeppelin, who else was singing? Maybe John Paul Jones? I don't know. But Plant was the lead singer. This one here. He starts to harmonize, and Allison sings, has a few more leads than what she did on the other one. Absolutely gorgeous album. Something peaceful and relaxing. Then, coming on down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, my God. All right. I guess it's number seven. A GA20, Hound Dog Taylor. And it's Try It, You Might Like It. Uh, the GA20, this is off the coal mine records. They they do a tribute to Hound Dog Taylor. Hound Dog Taylor is one of my all-time favorite bluesmen. He's a party. He's 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 party on vinyl. That's that's what he is. His, his music. It's you know, he didn't get recorded till very late in the stage. Uh, but his music is just, it's fuzzy, 
fuzz box guitar blues. And these, this group, GA20, takes it and runs with it and makes it, I, it, it's, it's a good tribute. They don't change it up a ton. They kind of play how Hound Dog would have played it, but it sounds great. It's raw. It's loud. It's funky. Good stuff. GA20 there. And it's um, Hound Dog, does Hound Dog Taylor. Wow. Incredible good album. Really loved it. Then, Dave at Local Bandography. A lot of people were showing this. I hadn't bought it. Uh, Dave Local Bandography. You know how much my music gets inspired by channels? And by the way, please, in your comments, if you want, let me know what your favorite albums of the year are. Because that's how you keep looking, right? That's how we keep trying and finding new things. And I really like that. But let's go to Emil and the Sniffers. I think this is number six now. Uh, I, I, I know of this group. I've thought about buying this group. Never had bought this group. And then Dave's doing it, and he basically kind of said, if you don't buy it, you're stupid. Yeah. Well, he didn't quite say it that way, but that's how I thought. I thought he was looking at me when he did it. Love this. This is, this is just a fast, angry punk. Uh, Emil? 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 She has attitude, and it comes searing out. My God, it is just it. It's it's great punk. It it truly is, and um, she just she comes out, tells it like it is. The guitars, the drums, everything. It's fast. It's furious. It's from Australia, so you get that. It's their second album. It's called Comfort to Me. Well worth if punk's your thing, you have to have it. If punk's your thing, you do have it. Uh, but if you like fast, hard-paced stuff, great stuff. You know, sniffers, comfort to me. Number five, we're going to blame uh, Sam, the vinyl douche again. Massage, still life. And some others have shown this also. Dream pop again. But here the harmonies, the vocals are better than the umbrellas that I showed earlier. Very, if you listen to both those albums, they sound similar. They, they, there is a lot of similarity on how they sound with the Dream Pop. The thing is, Massage is even better vocals. And they really blend them well. And it truly creates more of a dreamscape. Beautiful music. Relaxing, but yet fun. It's, um, it's uplifting music make you feel good really enjoyed this album a lot you know and i i appreciate um sam for showing it on his channel and getting me interested he dropped a sample samples are dangerous loved it number four i hadn't bought his first album but i knew of him and so i bought this one neil francis in plain sight this is so freaking good if you like piano and just bar room piano this guy pounds it but he does other things but this is fast paced it's fun his vocals are great uh but it, it, it just it just <laughs> you put that thing on if you got a party or something happening uh this this is great music for it because it it really is it's uplifting it's happy uh the name of in plain sight is the name of the album from neil francis it is super good ah my goodness i and uh mike from hub tunes has seen him he's out of chicago this guy's from chicago mike sent me his very first album which was incredibly good uh neil francis it's someone if you haven't checked out really worth checking out i mean the way he can play play the piano is it's it's incredible it just sounds so good so fresh so happy okay we're coming down number three madu maktar a lot of people have shown this and there's a reason why a lot of people have shown this uh Tarag music um, desert blues this gentleman's guitar is on fire if he was if there was dry kindling about and he started to play the kindling would set i mean it would just catch fire it is an incredible album 
I have some of his other albums. This is the one. It is so much. It's just wonderful guitar playing. But what adds to it, it's the percussion. It's what's going on in the background. It's the, you know, with the desert blues, it's about a groove. And they put this hypnotic groove, and that's what's happening. So his guitar is playing with this hypnotic percussion and bass and other types of things going on in the background. And that's really what helps make this so incredibly good. He's out touring. This would be a concert that I would love to see because he truly, truly is an incredible, exciting guitarist. And you can check him out on YouTube videos. And I have Madhu Maktar, Afriki Victim, number three. Number one and two. I went back and forth, back and forth. But number two. And his first boy on the moon. This album gives me goosebumps. This is one of my most played albums of the year. I have never filed it. It stayed out. It is so good. Um... There can be a dream pop feel to it. There's a lot of 80s um, feel in there with the synthesizers. What's really beautiful is the singing. And the vocals are gorgeous. Uh, they just, and the songwriting is so nice. Now, this is hard to find. Um, it's very, it's kind of limited out there. You have to look around for it. Uh, but I, I just, I'm, 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 in love with this album. I, I just, I've blown away by it. And it, again, it's just, it makes you happy. And, you know, you have some of these songs and you just go, it just gives me shivers on the beauty of the music that's coming out. And you hear the different, th you know, there, there's a lot of great playing that's going on. Uh, and it, it kind, of a, kind of an 80s vibe type happening in there. But truly, truly an incredible album. Um, one of my absolute, no, it's, it's my second favorite album of the year. Uh, the one that beat it out, number one. And, 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 and this one almost brings tears to my eyes on some songs. It's um, how he did it. And it's Moby's reprise. And he takes his hits. Or not even his hits, but different songs. Puts it rearranges them. A lot of them have orchestration. Some he brings in gospel choir. One he has Chris Christopherson and uh, Mark Langdon playing. At first when I heard it, I go, man, I don't know, those voices sound kind of, eh. but gosh darn, it's good. It's haunting, absolutely haunting. We are all made of stars. This gospel choir that comes in at the and if it doesn't put the hair on the back of your neck, that just, just doesn't stand up. I, I, I don't get it. Uh, it does Heroes. Uh, God Moving Over the Face of Water by Olaf Sons in there. My God, it's just incredible. This is just, I, I, I just put this on and I want to sit back and relax and let the music take me. Uh, I love Moby. I've always liked his music. But this thing to me is just how he rethought them through Deutsch Gramophone. It was so incredible. Favorite album of the year. There we have it. Guess what? Cat's just coming in now. He's been sleeping all day long. And he just missed out. Ha ha ha, Cat. Yeah, because I'm tight. So, please, let me know what your favorites were. Uh, so I can check them out. Some people have already sent them and I've been looking at the stuff. It's been very interesting. So... Uh, yeah, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Uh, see you Sunday. Bye.